Greetings everyone and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV where we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly, the Chicago and New York Appeals. How's everybody doing tonight? I wanted to jump on tonight because I know tomorrow we're going to be talking about the restitutional hearing and how you guys are feeling about that. So that's going to be just the live chat that's going to be open to everyone to discuss what they're feeling about um, what the hearing is going to present. So I needed to get on tonight and do this video so we will be ready for tomorrow. How is Kelly Nation doing tonight? Is there any Kelly supporters in the house in the chat? Can you say hello? Make sure we can hear clearly. So I came on early because I want to just get my, you know, conversation started. Give it a few more minutes for others to come in the chat. Do you feel that the way the videos were presented in evidence in court was correct do you think that they went through the right processes um of presenting the information on the uh, in in the chicago trial greetings justin hey wise hey so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight You know, it just came to my mind that um, ways that the appeal could be, you know, sought after in the Chicago trial for the six counts of child pornography that um, was introduced to the jury. As far as the restitutional hearing tomorrow, you know, we did a lot of information on that in the live discussion last night. God bless that situation. Put the energy surrounded that the best will happen for R. Kelly tomorrow at his restitutional hearing. And if you did not hear that live, it's titled R. Kelly Appeal TV, Court Issues on Restitution of Child Pornography Convictions. And um, it's being done even awaiting the appeal. And that's what I want to talk about today, the appeal, because we're getting ready to face that. You know, December 20th is an important time coming up, um, reflective to the appeal and the paperwork that must be filed during that time. Yeah, so I want to get you guys ready for that as well. So today I want to talk about the appeal process for Chicago. What may take place specifically regarding the tapes in the Chicago trial? I'm going to see how everyone's doing in the chat first, and then we're going to get right into the legal concepts of how videos are supposed to be reviewed in a court as evidence. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Okay. Hey, Wanda, how are you? Yes, I'm doing great. Doing great. Everything is really balanced. Everything on the docket has already been presented. We're just waiting on the restitutional hearing for tomorrow. Angela, hey. It could be a lookalike. It could have been, you know, wait until... I tell you about the research that I ran into um, on this on this research. AR. Hey JT. <coughs> Juan, do you say no they didn't? Um, the question that I asked, do you think that the videos were reviewed in court as evidence in a legal way? Or do you think that prosecution just threw stuff out there that could be very well appealable? A lookalike? Mm-hmm. 
Because that man right there that we see before us is too scrunchy looking to be R. Kelly. R. Kelly was always tight, clean cut. You know, he really didn't have all that. Hey, Daddy Lolo, how you doing tonight? So we're going to get into a little bit of information from the legal side that can be used as a possible opportunity for appeal because the videos that were reviewed in court as evidence was supposed to be presented in a certain type of way. So we all we we all heard transcripts, readings, and um, we've heard you know some of us were actually in the courtroom when this was going on, and you guys, you know we've done summaries of transcripts. So what I want you to do tonight is take all that you've heard, all that you've seen in the courtroom, and compare it to the legal way that it was supposed to be done, and see. If this is an appealable opportunity for Robert Sylvester Kelly. <coughs> How hard was it to present video evidence that stuck as substantial evidence in the R. Kelly trial that found him guilty on six counts of child pornography? Were the cases that convicted Robert evidence to build on that case that could land him an extra 30 years? Well, prosecution wants up to 90 with consecutive sentencing. So from the research that I've gathered tonight, it is highly important that the prosecution understands the context of the incidents that occurred in the video's evidence? Did they take that into consideration? Did they take the incidents that occurred in the video? Did they have true and convincing evidence that went beyond a reasonable doubt in the video? Or were they, the jury, enticed or obstructed by Judge Lennon Weber for the and or scenario that seemed to be so confusing when they were under their deliberation. Before coming up with the verdicts of the 13 counts being reduced to six. And mind you, Kelly Nation, that reduction is a great thing to hear. Kelly Nation, it's a great thing to hear because this will be a this will be part of the appeal that Bonjean should be filing against the other six uh, charges that he was convicted on. Isn't it ironic that they found these tapes and reduced 13 counts to six? Isn't that like ironic to you? What's your thought on that? I have a lot of thoughts, but I want to get your thoughts. He was also bald. Okay. Him and his brother Carrie looked alike back in the day. Yeah. We will never know because the judge won't let them be viewed. Hold up, Jennifer. Hold that thought, sweetie, because I got some information. <laughs> so never say never. We just might be able to see these things that the judge would not allow to be viewed. You remember back in the day, our parents used to tell us, it's not what you do, but how you do it. Angela, they didn't want to pay to get an expert to even look at the tapes. So the whole thing should be thrown out. See there? See, these are options that we talk about here at Kelly Nation that really and truly makes 100% sense. Angela, you're right. I mean, come on. They had plants in the jury. They had plants in the jury, of course. Yeah. But God got this. Absolutely. Hey, Tim. 
something was viewed it was just snippets yeah 17 clips 17 so let's go back to this research that i found and i want to get your point about so because of the fact that the, they were only able to deliberate and they acquitted him on seven of the 13 counts which reduced it to six and that reduction is a good thing to hear kelly nation because this is what the part of the appeal could be used if it's, this is one strong part of an appeal that could be used that Bonjean could definitely uh, promote and um, create as an appeal process. She has until December 20th to uh, report on what it is that she is going to reveal in this Chicago appeal. So she has more than enough time to get the information together of what they're going to fight against on this appeal for Chicago. So it's to me, the most ironic part was that R. Kelly was found guilty with these type of tapes, VHS tapes during a time in history where VHS was not digital mastery. It had no digital master to it. So anyone could record anything on any video that was recordable at the time. So it would be a whole different perspective if they had found him with the tapes and, and the tapes had been, uh, the, uh, of, what is that DVD? It would have been totally different. It would have been a totally different outcome. That's why 2022 is the cutoff year for some reason. 2022 was the cutoff because anything could at that point, up to this point, be digitally mastered with other types of projections. And it's called electronic devices. You can use the HDMI. You can use the output. You can use the input. There was a video that I watched today that shared how they took a VHS, digital, digitally mastered it, and put it back on a VHS copied with the digital master on the VHS, which was a copy and a duplicate. So not only that, we're looking at the time in history that VHS was not digi digitally mastered because even the digital mastery copies of VHS can be manipulated by VHS to digital options, outputs. So was this honored when reviewing the tape in 2022? I hope the prosecution broke that information down to the jury, or I hope that in the case when Bonjean was breaking it down, but she has so much to discuss and so much to rebut, I don't even know. Um, hold on. I don't even know if she was literally looking at that part of it as where this tape mastered the digital copy to. Okay, was uh, the jury was to come to the correct verdict based on what segments of the tape were shown. You know, I wish that someone in the chat had been in the um in the courtroom because i want to know why was it 17 clips shown of child pornography to prove what point and i think the extensive analyzation of these videos the length and the clips and the amount of time was far overreaching the point of what prosecution was trying to prove what was the whole purpose of showing the the un the authentic the unauthentic tape because that's what we're dealing with here and this is how it would look on an appeal level legally okay so let me see how can so many people hate one man because they hate themselves wise the only thing that breeds hate is the dislike of one's own being. 17 clips with only 30 seconds or so 
playing from each clip. So Daddy Lolo, we're going to get into that with the mastery and the um, unauthenticity of the tape and how these tapes could have been coerced or manipulated to create the whole storyline that prosecution expected the jury to review on a man's life. And this is why this is so strongly appealable that I wanted to bring it up just to have it on historical levels of our Kelly Appeal TV. Money could be another reason why they hate one man and greed. Thank you, Jennifer. Linda, how are you tonight? Um, well, the post-trial motion is not the same as the appeal. Um, she has till December 20th to come up with her purpose for um, the New York appeal and why she feels that that appeal is should be mandated. And if she doesn't come up with it, she's going to have to um, she's going to have a fine that she's going to have to pay. So she has enough time to put this together. Um, can Bonjean request a different judge based on the court judge corruptions? Well, Jennifer, the thing about it is the appeal process, if they are granted a new trial at that point, I do believe that um, they would get either another judge or they would request that someone from a different circuit or, or a different um, court would consider sitting in on the case. I, I really don't know how that goes because um, once the appeal is granted, it could it may be a new trial, but I I highly you know I highly believe that it will be a um, a another trial a whole new one. I think they will just throw out or they would um, continue to maybe take off a few more of the. Um, of the information of from the six convictions, you know. Mm -hmm. Prosecutors never presented a forensic specialist. Yep, we're going to talk about that tonight. Um, even a forensic specialist should have been just someone who could analyze that the tape was authentic. You know, um, I knew it was unauthentic when they didn't have the timestamp watermark on it. And that's why going back to the research that I did tonight, um, I realized that the manipulation from the VHS tape and then 17 clips. So the clips were separated, obviously. And it stopped and it started. It stopped and it started. So we have no idea what video the jury was to come to the correct verdict on. And this is why this is so appealable because the segment of the tape that was shown was shown specifically for the jury. Was it too much for the jury to even see pertaining to the reason that the prosecution even brought the videos into evidence in the first place? See, there's a way that you present video footage and audio footage in court. And I'm sure a prosecution didn't think enough to do it in the correct light. And this is why this situation with the videos are so appealable. Was this clear in the discovery when they decided to just show child pornography? They had seen, obviously prosecution has seen hundreds of times in the courtroom in 2008 and prior to 2008 from CNN, Jim Derogatis, and all the other videos that were floating around, hundreds of times people were watching child pornography. And the individuals where this child pornography was supposed to be looked at in a court of law was very taboo and it was also illegal. Child pornography being shown in any area or instance without some type of, it's called, let me see here. It's called PII. Let me see what that stands for. 
like not being able to show the miners actual face on this video that's how we look at reliability when we deal with the court of law um presenting evidence in a court of law um we want to prevent personally identifiable information okay was anybody's personal identifying information taken out of those videos um, and then two, we're going to also talk about, let me see here. Was that clear enough to the jury to even be allowed in trial? You know, you look at the way that these VHS tapes are so blurry. So whatever, are they even clear enough to have been allowed in the trial to convict a man for a lifetime? I hope that the prosecution did their part in looking into these facts in the world that built its verdict on legalized images that now can be looked at in a 24 hour footage on surveillance, cell phones, images being taken by everyone in any moment. How is this present day video evidence going to be allowed in a courtroom after Robert Sylvester Kelly's case? And this is another reason why I feel that the video should be appealable. I believe that they should go in there and try to look at the authenticity of it. We must take into account that not every video clip will be admissible in court. And many of the clips, if you're talking 17, why did it take 17 video clips in order to get to get the prosecution to put the jury in a position where they could create a verdict. And after 17 clips, they still exonerated him of seven of those convictions. Was this admissible? Was this video admissibility legal to show in the R. Kelly Chicago case? These are questionable appeal questions that the Kelly haters hasn't considered because they are so worried about having to get a conviction. 90 years almost in prison, consecutive. So what are your thoughts? I'm gonna come over to the chat now because we still got a whole lot more to talk about on this one. A whole lot more. Okay, can Bonjean request a different judge? Okay, for the appeal. Um, Jennifer, I will look that up. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you yes. However, I will definitely look that up and I will let you know because that is a great question. Timothy, so the only question I got is why is there one case where they say it had no voice on it and then there's another case where there is a voice. It's confusing and we're going to talk about that tonight specifically based on the legality of the voice audio and all of that. So we're going to get to that tonight. Prosecutors never presented a forensic specialist to speak on that. Yeah, yeah, I know that. And that's another appealable situation that we're going to talk about tonight based on how they were supposed to present this video as a, as a, um, legal, legal, as legal evidence. Rashonda Landfair's word of mouth cannot make a video authentic. And I'll share with you why in about five minutes. Rashana said, Rashana's mother said it wasn't her daughter. Okay. Um, wow. The jury should have questioned why all of the witnesses had to be given immunity. Absolutely. That's definitely another appealable situation there. Why was everyone, so immunity autom automatically grants um, the fact that, that there was guilt. They needed to cover up the guilt in order to get the confession. Um, so yeah, that's a definitely n another appeal format that can be used to argue an appeal. Um, I couldn't see the videos. I can only hear audio and it's so of it. So I can't speak to how clear it was. 
Well, even with the audio, the audio does not make it authentic because of the fact that audio clips, I do videos and I attach video overlays on top of it. And whatever I'm talking about, I can narrate a video with no sound from the video, but my voice can be behind it telling you everything that's going on in the video. So that right there is a definite unauthentic way of producing evidence that is going to cost a man his life. They can blur out the faces of body parts and editing for the jury, but that would be editing. Absolutely, Jennifer. And again, editing is unauthentic. Unauthentic. Because the woman that couldn't take it no more would have been a hung jury. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, ordinary, they threat they uh, made her feel so some type of way. They stressed her to hell out. I would say there's 17 clips that sound like they were trying way too hard. That's my point, Timothy. And we're going to get into that why it was that many clips and the the evidence that should have been presented we're going to talk about that my biggest hang up is jane testifying to carrying on a long-term sexual relationship with him into her 20s how can it be confirmed when it was recorded hmm hmm good question how can it be confirmed when it was recorded Hmm. It's called a voiceover. Thank you, Ordinary. That's what it's called, a voiceover. Yes, it is. Yeah, and the deep fake on YouTube, we've already done a video on that. So we already know what that does with video footage. And um, okay, so now we're going to go back to the research. Let's talk about the rules of evidence. Just because an incident has been captured on film does not imply that the case is open and shut for R. Kelly. Attorneys were to filter out irrelevant segments. So 17 videos, 17 clips, sorry, 17 clips of videos that were, that had nothing to do with start to end were segments. It's kind of like I take copy and paste and clip in videos to let you see the entire thing the way I want you to see it. Those who were in the courtroom can answer to this question. How relevant were those 17 clips of a child pornography video when these jurors had to view 17 clips? Now we're going to talk about the relevance of the clips. The timing of video evidence can also be another factor in court proceedings. Now let's discuss, uh, well, before we get to the reliability of the evidence, let's talk about the relevance. 17 clips, Timothy, you were right. They're trying way too hard. What did they expose in these 17 clips, that three clips or the video itself from 2008 could not have been replayed to show exactly what they showed in 2008. What was the difference? Mm -hmm. This is the reason why I feel that Bonjean has a way to look at the ir irrelevance of the segments of video footage that they submitted into that court and they should have allowed the clips to be approved in discovery. And the timing of that video evidence can also be another factor because the court proceedings had to present the timing of the video. So without a time mark, without a timestamp legally, it should have been thrown out. The video itself should have been thrown out. And the evidence on its own, based upon the credibility of the the witness, which was all that all they had was Rashonda's uh um was her her testimony, there would have been no Chicago trial. Now let's discuss the reliability of the evidence. 
was the video in Robert Sylvester Kelly's Chicago trial lawfully obtained and from a reliable source? That's the question I, listen, that's it. That's an appealable situation right there when I asked the question. Was the video in Robert Sylvester Kelly's Chicago trial lawfully obtained and from a reliable source? Let me go over to the chat. I know y'all talking big time. No specific time or date on the video. Even to the point, Linda, where the video in 2008 supposedly, now this is just supposedly because I was not in, in the courtroom and I also really didn't listen to every segment of the transcript. I didn't read all that. But no timestamp, no watermark. They were not relevant in my mind. They only was trying to put out there on how she kept saying, yeah, how are you going to say 14 years old? That's a straight setup in and of itself. That's a straight either role play or setup. But that doesn't authenticate her being actually eight, uh, 14 years old. No, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, there is no relevance to them having to show that age other than to project that into the jury's mind. But was that relevant information? Was that taking and exploiting her even further in that courtroom to just get a conviction? Appealable. Appealable. If this is one of the clips of the screen, this look fake. Don't it look fake? Don't it look fake? Like it's a green screen right behind it. And I know I dealt with green screens in 2006. I was over in London somewhere talking in my bedroom. <laughs> in 06. Come on now. No one does that at any age. Right. Oh, I'm 14 years old. Like Why? What's your reason for saying it? It's not like you, I don't know, because I didn't see the video, but I, I would assume that if I'm saying something like that at 14 years old in a child pornography video, I'm being raped. Help me. I'm only 14 years old in this video. Help me, help me, help me. Was she saying that? Was she saying that in the video? I don't know. Hey, Unique, how are you? Hearsay, that's all they based the evidence on. Hearsay and a witness testimony that finally showed up. A witness testimony that we're going to even talk further about. It's just crazy because nobody really has a VHS player anymore. So how does that work in 2022? Well, see, here's the thing. The fact that, you know, these videos could be uh, digit digitally mastered to make it DVD digital and that video vhs and they still sell vhs you know tvs or vhs players you can go and re-record on a digital digitally mastered um video i was just looking at that before when um when i seen a guy online in 2022 making a copy of a vhs tape to a digital DVD. So he burned it from the VHS. So there's through outputs and different um, HDMI opportunities now. Yeah, they have all that. Anything you think you can think of. His head was put on a body. It, you know it could look, yeah. Yeah, that could be too. My take on that fake age is that she was involved with others for quite some time. Mm-hmm. All right, now, so again, the reliability of the evidence. Was the video in Robert Sylvester Kelly's Chicago trial lawfully obtained and from a reliable source? Is Lisa Van Allen a reliable source? Keith, uh, Keith from Kansas, uh, Timothy, <laughs> is he a reliable source? Uh, 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 the other guy, all the guys. Are they reliable sources? 
And when you get to the authentication of the chain of how a video is supposed to be presented, y'all really going to be like, dang, for real? All of this stuff are, these are appealable opportunities here. Were the clips authentic and not manipulated or tampered with in any way? It could not be authentic and it had to be manipulated and tampered with because of the way that they showed 17 clips. They didn't show a full video verbatim. Hmm, sounds like an appealable opportunity. Let's talk about the quality and the branding of videos. So you know that when a video has been stored over the years with dust and everything else, it can manipulate the authenticity of the video itself. The originality breeds its credibility at this point, meaning that do the witnesses actually see what is being depicted on the tape and how they testify to the jury, their perspectives? Is this credible enough to convict someone? Is it credible to look at the video and even the witness of the video telling you the where, the when, the how, the why, and the where, what, when, how, and why. Is it credible enough to convict? That's another thing, Kelly Nation, I want you to think about. Now, we're just talking about credibility, reliable sources. The way that the video was brought to whoever got it, however derogatory got it, and put it into... The 2008 trial, period, point blank, was that even an authentic video that we seen again in 2022? A pillable opportunity. And does the witnesses actually tell the truth of what is being depicted on the tape? So if she has to sit back and be and and look at 17 clips of her, what part was that? How does she even describe, oh, this was the part that he took it out and then made me get on the refrigerator or whatever. Or this is the part where we did this, that and whatever, whatever part was played in that video. She had to know the when, the what, the where, the how, and the why. And it had to make sense to be authentic. And how she testified to the jury based on her perspectives will make the authentic tape credible enough to convict. And I don't think based upon the transcripts that I've heard, um, that I've read, the pieces of summaries that I've done, I didn't see any type of credible conviction, uh, uh, credible, reliable perspectives of how the tape was even created. She should have been able to tell that. Now I'm going to go to the chat, but then after that, we're going to discuss video evidence without any witnesses. We're going to talk about that from 2008. But let me go back here real quick. See what you guys are saying. See, all of these are appealable opportunities. Okay. His head was put on a body. And that could very well be. I'm telling you, green screens were out back then. Um, my take on that fake age is that she is involved with others for quite some time. So, yeah, she's been, she get around. She got around. Yeah, I have one with the CD player and the VHS on it. One component, absolutely. And people do things and they save videos. You can go to a store that sells, um, you know, old vintage type, even vinyl record players are still being sold. You know, the cassette players are being sold because you can go to any 
grocery store or like Walmart or Target and you can even buy blank um, cassette tapes. So they still wouldn't be selling the cassette tapes if these, um, you know, if, if the other, if, if the machines weren't available. He didn't have immunity, okay. Um, let me see. None of them were reliable sources as they all have been given immunity. Absolutely. There was something that was taking place as why they had to get immunity to even talk. Um, none of this is gonna really matter if Kim Fox does her part in the state trial um, because the federal government... <laughs> does not have the same jurisdiction. So what is happening in the federal realm is not the same thing that can happen in the state realm, but we'll soon see. Hey, K hey, baby. Does R. Kelly have a tattoo on his arm? Um, I believe so. He has a, a survivor, I think on it, but here's the thing about, um, about tattoos, many tattoos and many people they use temporary tattoos. So even then, you know what I mean? A temporary tattoo could be possible as well as no tattoo on his arm at all. So the forensic guy in 2008 said it was a fake. The attorney investigator and McDavid said it was a fake. So see, these are appealable opportunities, especially when we talk about once the information is evidentiary on in the in the court, we're going to talk about that in a little bit too. <laughs> Jennifer, not the refrigerator. <laughs> you know <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sir Miguel, that's why the judge in two thousand eight called it a the rotten tomato. Mm hmm. Yep. Best Buy. Um, Walmart, all of them, yeah. Yep. How could only one juror have the sense to realize that they witnessed, the witnesses were lying? Mm. To the point where she didn't want her name on it, Linda. She said, before I do that, I'll have a panic attack. I'm going to hell up out of here. God don't like ugly and all them people going to get paid for that just because. Daddy Lolo, you are so correct, Sir Miguel says. Hey, good afternoon, sir. Good to see you. So we're going to talk now about video evidence without any witnesses. So remember, with Rashonda not being present in 2008 to testify against the evidence, obviously they saw the video because they talked about having seen the video in 2008, right? How were they able to look at a child pornography video and the witness was not even there to authenticate from the testimony? So this is why the acquittal was given to him. He didn't beat a case. He didn't obstruct justice. He didn't tell anybody, threaten anybody, any of that. The authenticity of the tape had to come from a testimony. The environment, when it happened, where it happened, how it happened, and the footage itself had to be recorded and it had to all align and make sense. There was not much authenticity sought out from the testimony because she wasn't there. Now, under the silence witness theory, under the silence witness theory, which Jane used in the video captured, comes from a properly managed system like those in banks, shopping malls, security where it's tight. What they showed in the trial in Chicago in 2008 was substantive evidence. But in 2022, when they show, did they show true evidence in the trial? No. The appeal process is underway. And it should be filed by December 20th, 2022. The appeal process for the Chicago 
expectation of appeal. So we're going to talk about how to present video footage in an evidence in a court of law. Now, everybody was who was in the um, in the courtroom and those who listened to every transcript that everybody spoke about knew everything that went on. We're going to now take and compare it to the real life way of conducting a criminal or conducting evidence when in trial for a video. All right, here we go. Let me go to the chat before I go so I can break these um, this down to you so that you will know for yourself, Kelly Nation, what should have took place and compare it to what did take place. That's all, I'm just trying to introduce you to some concepts that could be possibly appealable. And the first one in of itself makes it an unauthentic, credible, uncredible video. The very first, because I have five. I'm not even going to take you through all the eight. I'm only going to take you through five. Maintain. You guys ready for number one? According to the criminal justice system, in order to use video footage as evidence in a court of law, the first thing they must do is maintain an unbroken chain of custody. I'm going to say it again. Maintain an unbroken chain of custody. What does that mean? Let's see what Kelly Nation knows about unbroken chain of custody mind you aside from checking how the video got there how authentic it is who was on the video the footage of all the information that should have been um, bleeped out because of privacy Running through deep fake te technology, running through deep fake technology, it is imperative to also present an unmodifiable record of all the actions in court. I'm going to read it again. Aside from checking how the video evidence has been tampered with or running through deep fake technology, it is imperative to also present an unmodified record of all the actions in court. So by them showing clips, that was un unauthentic, appealable. One of the greatest challenges facing law enforcement is the digital evidence collection process. Nowadays, the prevalence of video editing software makes it dangerously simple to manipulate videos. Not having a monitoring system to track each change on a file means there are multiple ways to twist and complicate the truth around a crime scene. Therefore, the judge and jury in court may question who has had possession of such video evidence and how it was managed since the incident was captured. Now, mind you, we talked about how dust, having a, v, a VHS in either your garage or your basement for 10 years, waterlogged, dust, and all that other stuff, and then you take it out and you put it into the VHS, it is not as authentic as it was when it did its digital process. And that video that I saw today, I wish I could bring it back. I thought that would bore you. But that VHS that that guy talked about taking over to DVD and putting it back on the VHS and looking at with a digital mastery to it looks so authentic, but it's not. Number two, here's the next thing you're supposed to do in court. Use the original recording in court. 
While analyzing and enhancing file segments, law enforcement users work on a duplicate version of the file. To present in court, attorneys prepare rigorously to anticipate any claims against how and where video evidence was created. At times, submitting an original file is a safer bet as some courts may not accept enhancements and clippings in video evidence. So number two, so they've already violated two of the major ways to present a video audio uh, recording in court. Three, now you guys tell me, because if you have been listening to the transcripts, you have been watching all of the court proceedings. Have they done these three things I just said? The first thing is, maintaining an unbroken chain of custody. So, you know, we don't know what happened when the tapes got from Lisa Van Allen, looking at the tape, the guy coming to get the tape and taking it and recording it, all that. Maybe that was part of the whole plan to talk about doing that, to make sure that it was an unbroken chain of custody. Number two, Use the original recording in court. They didn't do that. They used clips. 17, as a matter of fact. Number three, have security controls in place. Successfully having video evidence admissibility also requires one to have proper security controls in place. Remember they had in the prosecution where they said that the video had got lost and then there was something sealed and then they didn't want to unseal it. And they asked for a motion not to unseal because I don't believe the tape, the original tape was even there. Without it, the evidence can be easily tampered, re-uploaded with a different version changed by unauthorized personnel such as malicious insiders or be exposed to external cyber attacks and much more. Now, they have over maybe uh, seven more paragraphs to this alone. So if you want to know, did they have security controls in place watching this video over the course of 11, 12 years? Hmm, we don't know that. Number four, we are to prepare video for transcription. Transcription not only meets compliance requirements, but ensures accessibility when presenting an interview room recording. Not everyone in court will be able to hear the video perfectly. Well, hell, they didn't even have an audio in 2008, but miraculously, I think they should have had a transcript with the audio of 2022 that miraculously showed up with the unauthentic tape. If audiovisual evidence is in a foreign language, translation can help to reduce or eliminate ambiguity. And number five, I'm only stopping at five. I ain't even going all the way to eight. Redact any sensitive information. That little girl's face, supposedly, little Rashonda Lanfair, Jane, her face should not have been shown in that courtroom with her being a minor on the tape because they were promoting child pornography. Letting, let alone what they've now unleashed in the minds of these individuals that had to sit in that courtroom. That's one of the major reasons why that lady had a stress attack. By hiding all personally identifiable information, such as faces, bodies, and license plates through redaction, law enforcement agencies can protect the privacy of witnesses and innocent bystanders as well as prevent lawsuits from violating requirements as per CCPA and other region-specific data privacy laws. Did they even follow the, the privacy acts? when they showed these videos to the world. When it comes to court hearings, every single piece of evidence matters. Several times, the evidence holds enough weightable, weightability to turn around a case entirely. And that's exactly what prosecution may have just done. Because I believe that I think all they wanted to do was get the information out there for everybody to know. They didn't care how they did it.
Therefore, it is necessary to appropriate digital evidence disclosure by ingesting it from all sources. Evidence can be sourced from various elements. A crime scene may have uh, bystanders with mobile phones recording them. So you have to personally uh, cross out for the HIPAA laws that's, you know, or not um, HIPAA laws, but the um, disclosures of privacy, you're going to have to even cross their faces out. What about police officers with the dash cams? So Robert Sylvester Kelly's case in Chicago is going to bring about a very serious evidentiary law when it comes to digital um, putting, presenting video footage in court. All that's going to be very vital, very extremely vital. All right, so what do you guys think about what I brought out tonight? Did it make sense? Is this appealable to Kelly Nation or am I just crazy? Talk to me, Kelly Nation. If it was CP, why would it still be on the internet? The government has strict CP laws against CP. Absolutely correct. To the point where when I put this picture up to make this my cover page, my entire computer shut down and literally I had to, it restarted and rebooted itself and then I had to recreate a different title for this. I had a real cool title, but I had to recreate a different title to this because I believe that this video has some form of child CP virus that could possibly, but it doesn't matter because everything I do on my video on my computer is all related to, you know, what I'm doing here on our Kelly Appeal TV and it's, it's public knowledge. I hope and pray that Jennifer would get Jane's birth certificate and check out when exactly she was on tour in Europe. Mm-hmm. That could be, there's another appealable opportunity, Linda, you're on it. And the judge said the chain of custody is not admissible. That is wrong. That is incorrect. In his courtroom, that may fly, but at the second circuit and anything beyond that in a real true court of law, in a real true court of law, not a, I don't know what this is. I don't know what type of, of court system you know, um, these people are running, but on that second circuit, on that fifth circuit, on that seventh, ninth and Supreme court level, that don't fly. Appealable opportunity. It's been said that there was no voice on the tape in 2008. It's an unauthentic tape also because there's no watermark to it. Period. It's unauthentic, whether it has a voice or not, it's unauthentic. And I dare anyone to challenge me on that. It's been said that they're okay. And the defense proved that it was not the original. See what I'm saying? There is no original. The only original on any tape is when you first record even the digitally mastered DVD that was recorded off of the VHS. If you guys go back and look at that video, I don't even know what video it is. Maybe I'll find it again and then I'll put it in the description box. It's a 17 minute video and he showed you the uh, tools that he uses, the VHS that he uses, the difference between VHS videos from Sony versus the VHS from the little dollar store. You know, you get you a little fake, uh, um, the, 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 the authenticity between the two Sony is more authentic than this other one. That's has no name brand to it. <laughs> authenticity creates what is known as the watermark. Even if you do, I do prism live every time I do a video with prism live as one of my streaming apps, it says created with prism live. It's a watermark. It's all, the time, date, stamp, day. Everything is always there. Digitally or video analog. It's always there. So 
Hey, small fry, where you been? You have been like incognito. <laughs> I started off with you a long time ago. I wondered if that juror was pressured to vacate. That's what I'm thinking, Linda. But we'll soon find out. Oh, it's going to come out. It's going to come out in the appeal. It's going to come out in the aftermath, after the appeal. All of that is going to be, you know, all of that is going to be worth looking at. So, Kelly Nation, we got to keep our minds and we got to keep our eyes open to this thing. Hey, Ray, how you doing? I have never heard of a case being so obviously corrupted to try to convict a person. You named about six appealable issues. I can go into 12, I think, that I did tonight, along with what we already discussed. Linda brought about four or five herself. <laughs> Jennifer, do you see how this thing is going down? Yes, prayers all day, prayers all day that we keep our minds straight because we see what type of, of system we're dealing with. Yes, it is appealable in my opinion. Wanda, I'm telling you, Bonjean has over 15 different appealable opportunities if she just uses in the Chicago trial the videotapes and how they were presented as evidence in the court of law. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. <laughs> I hope she gets it too, but I don't want to seem like I'm manipulating how she's thinking, how she's running her show with Robert. But it's just, you know, it's something that I want Kelly Nation to know about. And this is, this R. Kelly Appeal TV is going down in history. This is going to be available to those people 50, 60, 90 years from now when they look at uh, the R. Kelly appeal and they say, whoa, what happened to that dude R. Kelly? They gonna really see the truth on our channel. That's why I got to keep it the way that I need to keep it so that all people will be able to understand which way we think over here. Oh, you've been on vacation. Okay. <laughs> All right, I gotta, okay, I gotta hang with you, small fry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I see how a lot of people didn't jump ship on, on, on Robert. They love his music. You know, they may still play it at a ballpark or at the, you know, in the backyard or something for a birthday party. It may just um, automatically come on the, uh, the playlist, but they ain't really thinking about Rob like they were before. Each of the black jurors looked pissed off when they came back to render the verdict. So much so you would think that they were forced to prove him guilty of the six counts. They were forced. They were forced. If they were not forced, they would not have acquitted him on the other seven. They wanted to give him a acquittal so bad, they literally took away more of the convictions than they did what they punished him for. So guess what? That is appealable in and of itself because the and and or has a, a, a representation in the way that we hear American um, verbonology, if that's even a word, but the way that we create our sentences and, and, and slash or means and, or you can find him guilty and, uh, with this and another uh, another conviction or this or that. You can do one, you can find him guilty of one, or you can find him guilty of and however many more you think he should be guilty of. But when they saw that they weren't moving the jury based on the deliberations, they realized that the terminology is still going to get a conviction with the or than it does the and. It's just the way that we speak in America that got this man incarcerated. <sighs> Daddy Lolo, that's so sad. But it's going to come back. It's going to all come out. Have you heard of the Safety Act, the law being passed in Illinois in January 2023 the purge yeah i did hear about that even if he got time in illinois he probably won't serve it you know that purge thing jennifer i did hear about that and i said i was going to do a um 
a video on that because because it was so much stuff going on in Illinois, it had me worried. But then somehow or another, I forgot about it and I'll get to it when I get to it. But that purge, yeah, I absolutely heard that before. <laughs> Their ass could not even figure out what year it came out because they kept saying 1999 or 2000. Mm -hmm. I had a chicken biscuit fries and a soda from Popeye's. That's different from... A chicken biscuit fries or a soda from Popeye's. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. You see how we speak our terminology. And I'm telling you, like when we did the live yesterday and we talked about that whole restitutional hearing thing, which we're going to talk about tomorrow because y'all already know what I said. It's probably going down because now... You know, none of these motions were ever even filed to take that man's money. But that's yesterday. We're talking about this one today. Anything is going to come out. Oh, everything is going to come out in the appeal process. I love when you bring us the knowledge and I've learned a lot from you. Thank you, Wanda. And thank you for giving your input because it keeps me motivated to keep going. Um, and I'm doing this because I know that R. Kelly has been wrongfully convicted on both of those trials and I'm gonna keep holding on people are like how do you keep coming up with this stuff in your perspectives and how you see this thing because when the spirit of the most high puts it in you there is no turning back you know you can have a reprobated mindset and one minute you can be here and the next minute you can be there no you got to be unwavering unmovable and you must know and unshakable you cannot fear this game called life. You either believe what you believe and you are that belief or you are some type of reprobated person that's just going with the wind. Whoever the masses say you should listen to is who you listen to. I'm not that type. I'm a leader straight up. Internationally, nationally, motivationally, inspirationally, successfully, all those leads. You know what I'm saying? So thank you, Wanda. Okay. Oh, God, it's one hour and seven minutes again. Okay, um, I'm going to say a few more things and then we got to get out of here. That tape came out in 1998. Mm -hmm. Jason, how you doing tonight? Jennifer, unbelievable is going to be a pandemonia. Most all criminals will, criminals will be let out of jail and no one can go to jail. Guess what, Jennifer? Even the, you know, they, they trying to do what they doing um, because, you know, when the president get in trouble himself, oh, now it's time to open all the gates and just, you know, you just got to pray that you have the power to withstand anything and everything that this world can throw at you and you keep your sanity like Robert Sylvester Kelly has shown us. We better do. Because he has to do it. All kind of lies and dis uh, disgracing conversation about him is going all around him. But he is not shaken by it. And that's what Kelly Nation has to be about. And believe me, victory will eventually be his. Trust and know. Well, a reprobated mindset, Jennifer, is when one minute you think that... Okay, it's kind of like when a person decides that they want to be gay just because the world is gay. Okay, so you're a female and now, you know, you see all these uh, advertisements and everything like that. And everybody around you is, is being, you know, uh, um, gay, if that's the politically correct word. But then you know that you don't have feelings for a girl, but you choose to be gay because everybody around you is. You know, and that's a reprobated mindset when you know it's wrong and you still continue to do it because you've been put under this spell of psychosis that the world wants you to be under. Whether it's drinking alcohol, whether it's smoking cigarettes, whether it's eating unhealthy, all that stuff is reprobated. And look that word up in the biblical text of the Holy Bible and then you'll get the true understanding and the story behind that word. Um, gone crazy. <laughs> it's 
And it's really not lost your mind because you know the reprobation is the part of reprobation. And we can go on and on about this. That's why I don't speak on spirituality because it is a personal relationship with me. But when a question is asked, I must tell you that also um, it's not when you've gone mad or gone or lost your mind. It's when you've lost your way. Because so many people have overwhelmed your thought process. That's why you can have people who have jumped ship with Robert Sylvester Kelly. But before these convictions, oh my God, I'm willing to lay my life down. I know he's innocent. I know he's innocent. And then the minute that the world tells you he's guilty, just like Jesus Christ, time to stone him. Let's get him. <laughs> you know, that's reprobation. That's what I think it is. That's what I've been taught that it was. I'm so thankful for your channel because you opened my ears. So many new things about this dude. Jennifer Bonding is going to help you get this stuff straight. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to follow it to make sure that what I've earned in my degrees in criminal justice has been politically correct. And the way that I went through, see, I went through a system of predominantly middle class to upper class Caucasian men who try to de persuade me not to go into political science and not go into pre-law and not go into criminal justice. And because I had my baby, um, my, my last baby girl in 1998, I was on my way to Emory Law School in Atlanta, Georgia, in order to fight civilly. That's what I, that's where I would have been going had I not found that I was pregnant. So I wasn't supposed to go that route because everything happens for a reason. And I'm so grateful for my babies, every one of them. Yeah. Yep. Daddy Lola, right. When you can't think for yourself and somebody else makes that decision for you, po political, um, right now we're in the election based on who you vote for, if you even vote, because um, all of us don't vote, is going to be determined on how many times you see the commercial, how many paid advertisements will de determine who you're going to vote for. And then you think about it and you say, why did I vote that way? <laughs> After it's all said and done, because you didn't think for yourself. Oh my, I am trying to get back to God after a long relationship. I can't hear God. Is that reprobation? Well, you know what? You go back and look at rep reprobated mindset, Jennifer, and you decide that for yourself because your journey with God is a spiritual one that is unique to you. And it's totally different for me, just like recovery. Some my recovery may be abstinent all the way, no touch, nothing, no matter how legal it is. But somebody else's recovery may be, I just want to see my family today. I ain't even thinking about the last time I got high. I'm just thinking about seeing my family and that's what's keeping them in recovery, you see. So every journey is unique and different. So Jennifer, I want you to find that heart space within yourself, between you and your higher power. And then Come back to us and tell us what you think reprobation is. The reprobated mindset. Linda, we're going to ride out the storm with Kells for sure. Yes. Amen. There ain't no other way. Because I would want the same thing for myself. And if I started off with the belief that this man was innocent, that these people and I, they have showed us over and over and over and over and over and over again, that they are misrepresenting the law of America, then for us to say that he's guilty means that we are reprobated in our mindset, period. Yep, yes, they were. <laughs> yep, crucify him. Daddy Lolo said they were yelling out, Jesus is the King, Hosanna the Messiah, hallelujah. Then one week later, because these same people will scream and crucify him. This is why I feel that you should know that you know that you know that you know. And the only thing you can know is what you know. Forget about belief. Belief is too wavering. 
You have to know what you know. So Kelly Nation, that's what we do over here. That's why I give you the facts and you make the decision for yourself. I'm not telling you, you better stay with R. Kelly Appeal TV. I ain't telling you, you better watch me every time I go live. I'm not telling you none of that. Why? Because I want your mindset to be free. To where when you come and visit R. Kelly Appeal TV, you're accepting and embracing what I'm talking about because you've given yourself the opportunity to say, I'm a leader. I'm going to go and check out what she talking about tonight. Or I'm going to see if this is right. Or I'm going to go do my research after she talked to me. That's how I want our Kelly Appeal TV, Kelly Nation to be. Thank you, Spookabore, Spookador. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Larry. All right, guys, I love you all so much. So please, when you get into a debate or a situation with a Kelly hater, you know how to handle yourself because you've been informed 100% and you got the whole armor on, okay? So you take what you need to take. And when you go into these lives and you see how these haters are still talking about, oh, he's this, he's that. You know, you ain't even got to really tell nobody nothing. You can just know within your heart what you know. Okay? And with that, thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. Keep pushing it out because... We need Kelly back home. We need R. Kelly out of there. We need to get him, you know, the support that he needs for his leg. I'm praying on that every day. I'm praying on a strong mindset because he is the GOAT. And there, he's unbreakable. He's unbreakable. You know. Amen, Linda. That's the key. And with that, that's the greatest thing we can leave off of. I'm going to leave the chat open for another maybe two minutes. I'm out. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow after we get the um, restitutional hearing information. I will be on tomorrow about 7. Hopefully, they'll have enough of the information out there. As always, keep it 100, Kelly Nation, and we'll see you next time.